Do you want to know how to gaslight the narcissist and actually flip the script on them? I'm going to tell you how to do it in this video. So stay tuned. Hey, I'm Rebecca Zong. I'm an attorney. I'm a narcissist negotiation expert and on this channel and in these videos, I give you tips, tricks, resources, and secrets on how to powerfully negotiate with narcissists. And if that is something that you want to be able to do, I invite you to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. So, all right, let's talk about how to flip the script on narcissists. They're always trying to gaslight you. How do you gaslight them? All right. So first of all, what is gaslighting? Gaslighting is a term that psychologists use. It is a specific type of manipulation where the manipulator is trying to get someone to think or maybe it's even a group of people to think that they're crazy. Basically, you're trying, they're trying to get them to question their own reality, question their own mind, their own memory, their own perception. I have been the recipient of this. I've dealt with them. I have been the victim of covert narcissists myself, not as a husband, fortunately, thank God, but business relationships and in we had a family member and it's awful it is a really really horrible horrific horrible traumatic experience it is terrible uh it comes from the new movie gaslight i think it was also a play where in the that particular movie they were the husband was trying to make the wife think that she was crazy and he was blowing out the gas lights and she was like, oh, wasn't that just lit? And he would say, no, no, it wasn't. And that's where it comes from. So, and if you want to know more about the eight key narcissistic gaslighting phrases that narcissists use, you can definitely check out my video on that topic. So what I'm going to do here though, is give you some ways to not technically have you make narcissists think that they're crazy or actually manipulate them in such a way where you're, you know, having them question their own mind or whatever. But I call it ethically manipulating the manipulator where you're kind of stopping them in their tracks, where you are, you know, shutting them down. It's a way for you to protect yourself and create your own boundaries and, it helps you in the negotiation process for sure. And if you are so ready to shut them down, give me a shut them down in the comments right now. All right. So one of the things that you're going to do is this is especially really effective when you start to see them getting emotional and you will see this happening especially when negotiations start to get underway and when the relationship starts to break down, whether it's a business relationship or a personal relationship, and you are starting to go into that discard phase, that last kind of phase of a narcissistic relationship, that's when, you know, it starts to be war. That's when you're either for them or against them. With narcissists, it's, it's always a black and white kind of a situation. And if you're against them, then you become public enemy number one, for sure. So they will start to get very, very emotional. A lot of times that narcissistic injury gets triggered, that narcissistic rage comes flying out and they can get very emotional. Sometimes they get emotional because they're also trying to trigger you, by the way, they do it purposely just to get a rise out of you because they want to trigger you. So sometimes they will say things because they know that there are certain areas that they can push on, you know, for example, like if you've always tried to be a really good parent, a really good mom, a really good dad, they'll say, oh, you're a really neglectful parent. Or if they know that you've 
done a very good job in business and you, you know being mat meticulous with money is really important they'll say oh you're a spendthrift or you're terrible with money you know they'll say things that they know are not true so that you'll go oh how can you say this you know so be very careful about you know taking that kind of bait by the way but so one of the things you can do when you see them getting emotional uh, or you find yourself getting emotional is you can respond with things like, I understand that that is how you're seeing it. So you didn't disagree with them. You just say, I understand that that is how you're seeing it. So, you, you know, that is a, just an observation that you're making. All right. So that's one of the ways. The next thing that you can do is to get them to keep talking. This is a great way of also getting them to give you more rope to hang themselves. They are great at that. A lot of times people don't want to give narcissists more rope. Oh, don't let them get away with anything. Don't give them more. But if you give them more rope, most of the time they will hang themselves. So let them keep talking. Give them more rope. Uh, say things to them like, tell me more about that. Why are you thinking that? It will fluster them and they will start to realize sometimes how they are talking in circles and how maybe that what they're saying doesn't necessarily make sense. And what they are saying um, is kind of maybe not necessarily um, not in their best interests. And so it can sometimes be a good thing. And especially if you can get them to do it in writing, uh, even better because, you know, all writing uh, becomes a potential trial exhibit. Um, good advice for you too, to remember. Okay. So that's the second thing. And the next one, this is the last one is actually my favorite one because it is a great way to twist things around. And I, it, it, this is always ethically manipulating the manipulator. They are very, very good at manipulating. And this is just you ethically manipulating the manipulator. And this one is, I agree with you. You know, so if they say things like you are horrible with money or whatever, you can say something like, I agree with you that that is your opinion. I agree with you that we are not going to come to a conclusion on this today. I agree with you that we are probably never going to see eye to eye on this something like that. So that you're not agreeing on anything here. You're just saying, I agree with you. And then the rest of your st statement is not agreeing to anything that they're saying, but the beginning of what you're saying is I agree with you. It, it really kind of confuses them because you're saying I agree with you, but then the rest of what you're saying is actually not saying you agree with <laughs> agree with anything. And it, it's, um, it can be very confusing for them because they heard something, but then what is it that they actually, you actually said? Uh, so it is a really great way of gaslighting the narcissist, <laughs> gaslighting the gaslighter. So anyway, if you are dealing with this, I would love to know what other ones that you might have used and drop me that comment uh, below. And if you like this video, give it a like, give it a share, drop me that comment and make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. If you would like a copy of my free Crush My Negotiation prep worksheet, I invite you to grab it at winmynegotiation.com. I also invite you to join my free private Facebook group at Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung. Always welcome in there as well. And as always, today is a great day to start negotiating your best life. And I will see you in the next video.